Hi, Anne from Advanced Driving School. Um, welcome to a very windy and blustery, rainy day, but I'm nice and uh, dry and warm in the car. So there's been some changes to the highway code recently, and these changes have been made to ensure the safety of the most vulnerable road users. In this video, uh, I'm gonna talk about what the changes are, how they affect us when we're driving our car, and how they're gonna be marked on the UK driving test, because it is a little bit different. Um, before we continue, please uh, subscribe to our channel. And if you really found this video interesting, then please press the like button um, as it helps other people find our videos. And that would be really, really, really helpful. Thank you very much. So these changes have put the road users who are most at risk at the top of what we call a hierarchy. Um, at the top is pedestrians, followed by cyclists, horse riders, motorcyclists, cars, and then larger vehicles. Um, it's important to remember that everyone is still responsible um, for everyone else's safety on the road and their own. So just because there's a hierarchy, it doesn't mean that pedestrians aren't still responsible for their own safety. It doesn't mean that cyclists aren't, don't have to worry about pedestrians and car users don't have to worry about horse riders, cyclists. We all still are responsible for making sure that we are safe and also we are doing everything we can to make other road users safe. What we need to be doing is making sure that we understand who is most at risk and what we can do to eliminate that risk and be drive as safely as we can when dealing with those people. So we're gonna look at some scenarios where um, we're dealing with the most at risk people in this hierarchy, which is um, pedestrians um, and cyclists. That doesn't mean that it's not important to understand how to deal with horse riders or motorcyclists or other cars. Um, we just wanted to focus on the pedestrians and cyclists. That's what we most commonly have to um, deal with on a daily basis and the biggest uh, vulnerable road user group that you will face on your test. So, um, one thing to point out, which is really important to remember, that the actual rules about pedestrian crossings, so zebra crossings, pelican, puffin, um, toucan and equestrian crossings, um, those rules haven't changed. That is still absolutely the way it was. So we must still obey traffic lights. If the traffic light says green, we have the right to proceed. And if a pedestrian or cyclist is seeing a red stop light they must stop you know and the way we approach those crossings hasn't changed we should still approach with caution potentially thinking that someone might step out in front of us even if they shouldn't that hasn't changed we've always taught that as instructors and that's always something as a road user you need to be mindful of um, what has changed is when pedestrians are just waiting at the side of the road, they're not at a crossing, they're just waiting at the side of the road to cross, whether it be a, a dropped curb or not. But also when cyclists, um, there's a, been a bit of a change around how they can use the road to keep themselves safer. So we need to be aware of those. All other pedestrian crossing rules still apply. This is about when we're driving along and we come across someone waiting at the side of the road, not at a crossing, or we come across um, someone who is a, a cyclist and we need to be aware of what they might do differently. Um, one thing to point out straight away, the Highway Code states that we should, not must, we should deal with these most vulnerable road users in the way they're asking us to do. So let's be very clear, must, when it's written must in the highway code, means we absolutely must do it. It's something that you've got to do day in, day out, all day long. Should means that you do it when it is safe to do so. It is not an absolute given that you have to do it all the time. You should always try to apply the rule 
However, if it is not safe for you to do so, and it could put you, other road users, and that pedestrian at a real risk of um, an accident, being injured, being hurt, then you, sh you have the right to not do it. So must, you must do it all day long. Should you do it when it's safe to do so. So there will be times when it is not safe to do so, and that is absolutely fine. I think an important point to hear, to raise here is how do we make the pedestrian aware that we are letting them cross? Now this is um, a bit tricky. So a lot of people you will see, and it may well have happened to you when you've been waiting at the side of the road or even if you've been waiting in your car. So a lot of people will wave people across. They'll go, you go, you go, you know, that kind of thing. Or they'll do this and try to beckon you as a pedestrian or as a car across the road. We should not do that. Um, it is not a given that that other person will completely understand what you're telling them to do. Other cars around cannot see necessarily you beckoning. Um, you know, a lot of cars have slightly tinted windows these days, visibility inside a car, and other cars or other road users might be too far away to see that you've been beckoning that pedestrian. And you've got to think to yourself, do you want to be responsible for saying to that person, walk out into the road, and then all of a sudden something comes along? It's your responsibility then. You've made that person choose to walk in that road. You've beckoned them to do it. So we say, don't wave, don't beckon. Just if you slow down and you stop and your road position is nicely, safely away from that pedestrian um, and you're doing everything you can with your car without waving or beckoning, your car position and your speed, to show that pedestrian you're allowing them to cross. It is then the pedestrian's responsibility to decide whether it is safe for them to do so or not. So they still have to look for other traffic. If they wait and wait and wait, and we had this scenario the other day turning into the road where we live, uh, there was a, uh, a gentleman and his son standing at the side of the road wanting to cross. We were turning um, into the road and there wasn't anybody behind us. There wasn't anybody coming out of the road that we were turning into. So we stopped the car. Um, we had our signal on to say we were turning, but we stopped the car and stayed in a stationary position. The pedestrian looked at us we didn't wave, we didn't beckon because it's up to the pedestrian to take responsibility at that time. And they still just stood there and chose not to cross. So we're like, okay. So we carried on at a very slow and cautious speed to make sure that if they did all of a sudden step in the road, we would be able to stop our car safely. We weren't impeding any traffic behind us. We weren't... Um, creating a traffic jam, stopping anybody from making progress. So it was safe for us to stop at that time and give that pedestrian an opportunity to cross the road. They chose not to take it and that is absolutely fine. And then we proceeded with caution to make sure that everybody was still safe. So you shouldn't wave and you shouldn't beckon. Um, you're opening yourself up to then being responsible for what comes after and if, unfortunately, if it resulted in an accident, I wouldn't want to have that on my conscience, my responsibility that I waved that person across and then a car came out of nowhere and knocked them over. So be very clear, do not wave, do not beckon. You allow the pedestrian to see that you've stopped and you're waiting. They then choose whether they think it's safe to cross or not. They assess that situation. So let's first talk about we're driving on a quiet road not much is going on, might be hopefully out of town or a very non-busy time of the day. And it's just a single road, single carriageway road, and there may or may not be a drop curb, but there's a pedestrian waiting at the side of the road ready to cross. Um, there's no traffic island in the middle, there's no safety island for them to wait at because it's not a very big road. We've spotted that pedestrian in lots of time, which we should do because we should be observing. So what, what are we going to do to make the decision if we should stop, if it's safe to do so? So the, the position of the pedestrian is going to be important. So are they 
um, you know, safely off the road, or are they actually standing in the road waiting to cross? You deal with it accordingly, um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. It's important to be aware of what other traffic is around you. So is there someone coming in the opposite direction? Who's behind you? So using your mirrors effectively to check the status of traffic around you. Is there someone trying to overtake? Have you got a lot of people behind you? Um, or are you completely on your own? There's no one there. And it's just literally just you and the pedestrian. So all these factors will uh, make a difference in the decision you make. So let's imagine we're quiet road, there's no one around us, um, no one behind us, so no one's going to be trying to overtake. We've checked our mirrors, not a lot's happening, it's just you, the pedestrian, no one's coming towards you. Should you stop? Absolutely, all day long, you should stop. You know, it would be safe for you to slow down and allow that pedestrian to cross the road. Um, you wouldn't be... Uh, putting them at risk, for example, if someone was coming towards you and they hadn't seen that pedestrian, you're not putting that pedestrian in a situation that might cause them to get injured. Um, you're not impeding traffic behind you. And also you're not gonna have to brake sharply um, with people following you. So absolutely, you should stop for that pedestrian and allow them to cross. The pedestrian checks, they, they're happy that it's safe, they can see that we're not wait, that we're not going to go, and they cross the road safely. Brilliant. So there you go, nice and easy. That's the first scenario. Uh, but what about if the road is a bit busier? So same kind of road, pedestrians waiting to cross. We're approaching, we see the pedestrian nicely, we're checking our mirrors, making sure that we're aware of what's around us, and we notice that there is a lot of traffic behind us. Um, and particularly maybe the car behind us is a little bit closer than we'd like. You know, they could probably see what was inside your boot. Um, you've got to make a decision. What is the safest thing to do for all road users? Is the safest thing to stop the car and allow the pedestrian cross, uh, allow the pedestrian to cross, or is it safer to approach with caution, being mindful that the pedestrian might step out anyway, but not stop and not give way to the pedestrian because if you did, potentially the people behind you could cause an accident. So in that instance, you're, um, you know, you're making the right decision for the safety of all road users. Understanding that the pedestrian is the priority, so if you can, you should. But if it's gonna cause an accident with someone behind you, then absolutely not, you don't stop. It's the safest thing to do for all parties concerned. Another thing as well, so you might be on this road, there's not much traffic behind you, so it would be safe for you to stop, but there's a lot of traffic coming the other way in the lane. Firstly, you can't assume that they've seen the pedestrian or that they're aware of what's going on around them. Not everybody checks their mirrors, not everybody's observant. That's just the way it is. So you've got to make that decision. It's safe for you to stop, but actually, is the other traffic on the road showing intentions of stopping safely as well? If they are slowing down, then I would slow down as well. But if they show no intentions of um, giving way to that pedestrian and they're carrying on at full speed and completely oblivious to that pedestrian is there or they just don't want to give way, then it would be unsafe for you to stop to allow that pedestrian to cross because it would be okay in front of your car, across your path, your line, um, your lane, sorry, because you've stopped. But then they're going to be stuck in the middle of the road because the people oncoming haven't, have chosen not to stop. So therefore, you're really putting that pedestrian at risk of one, being in the middle of the road, and two, not being able to continue onto the other side because the other lane of traffic isn't giving way. So this is what we mean by assessing the situation. You have to take in everything that's going on. And really, it's not much different to what we did before. You know, whenever I approached somewhere that was a bit busy, um, and we teach our pupils this all the time, somewhere that's busy with a lot of pedestrians, I always say to my pupils, you know, just assume that people are gonna come out in front of you. Be ready for someone to do something unexpected. Don't assume that everybody's gonna follow the rules and do the right thing because they don't. 
you know. So um, it's important to realise that this isn't a huge shift in our thinking and our mindset, you know. This is not something hugely different. We should always have been driving in a in a way that we assess everything that's going on around us. What we're saying is we need to be giving priority to those most vulnerable road users and demonstrating in demonstrating that in our driving. We can't be responsible for what other people choose to do or not to do. We just need to be aware of what they are doing and making sure that everybody is being kept safe. So we've done our quiet road, we've done our busy road. Let's add in uh, uh, what we call a island, a safety island. So it might be that it's a dropped curb that the um, pedestrian's using and sometimes the dropped curb is on one side of the road and there might be a safety island in the middle, uh, literally just a little paved island for them to stand. And then they could continue over to the dropped curb on the other side of the road. Now in that situation, you know, that pedestrian's got somewhere that is safe for them to stay while they're waiting for that whole road, you know, the other lane to become clear. So if it was safe for you to stop in your lane, but not necessarily, um, you, you can't see the people in the other lane making an intention to give way, but you can see that the island is clear, there's a safety island there that the pedestrian can use, then you should stop. You should give way to that pedestrian waiting to cross, allowing them to go to the safety island, the crossing in the middle, and then the responsibility of whether someone gives way to that pedestrian then now lies with the traffic coming in the opposite direction, and again with that pedestrian for being aware of making the decision whether it's safe to cross. So that's how we deal with that if there's a traffic island. Now, there's not always, so, you know, it's uh, in your where you live, you'll be aware of where things are, hopefully. So it is literally you just assess that situation you're in at that time. So we've talked about a couple of um, scenarios where the road's quite busy, but it's just a single, single lane road. Well, what if it's dual carriageway? Now, this is uh, we do have some. Uh, roads in where we live that are in town so they're 30 mile an hour speed limits and they are dual carriageway this is where it becomes again a, a little bit tricky um, you've got to take a lot more information in and assess what's going on so the example I'll give is we're traveling towards um, a roundabout or a junction um, and just before uh, it's a dual carriageway, dual carriageway road, and just before that roundabout or junction, there is a dropped curb or a crossing place or a pedestrian waiting to cross. On approach to that junction, we can see the pedestrian, and we think, and you think, okay, right, I should, if I can, give priority to that pedestrian crossing the road. When we check our mirrors. Um, it's not too busy, not a lot of people around. There's a few cars, you know, but they're fairly way back. Your lane of traffic is fairly quiet. However, what's going on in the lane to the right-hand side of you? So you can only take responsibility for what's happening in your lane. You can't predict or judge or influence anything that's happening in that right-hand side, that right-hand lane. So you can approach with caution. You may think it's okay to stop and allow that pedestrian to cross. But what you've got to be mindful of is similar like the if there was an island or not an island on a single carriageway, that pedestrian's got to cross two lanes of traffic going in the same direction. Has anybody, if they're in that right lane, even seen the pedestrian? You've seen it, but you actually might be impeding their view. You might be blocking them from seeing that pedestrian on waiting at the side of the road. Have they seen them? Do they know that they should be given priority? Do We don't know if they've got intentions of stopping and allowing that pedestrian to cross. So in that situation, the likelihood is that you wouldn't really be you shouldn't really be comfortable stopping to allow a pedestrian to cross your lane of traffic, knowing that there was still another lane for them to cross on the right-hand side with traffic that potentially hasn't seen them, doesn't want to stop, can't stop, won't stop, whatever it might be. You know, in that instance, probably 90% of the time you're not going to stop. 
especially if it's busy. So the uh, the junction that we've got in town that this happens at quite a lot is approaching the town centre. It's very busy. There's a lot of shops around, so there's lorry deliveries and there's a lot of pedestrians around. There's schools near there, the college is near there. So you've got cyclists, you've got motorcyclists, you've got pretty much every road user you could possibly imagine, except for horses. You don't get horses in the middle of the town, not where we live. Um, you know, so 90% of the time, it's not gonna be safe for you to stop to allow that pedestrian to cross. So we have to take in all, everything that's going on around, you know, not just what's happening right in front of you, but is what is the traffic around you doing? Do you have a lot of traffic? Is there traffic to your right hand side? Are you on a dual carriageway, single carriageway? There's a lot to take in and a lot to assess to decide whether it's safe or not. And remember, the highway code says we should, not must. So we should approach with the intent to give way, being mindful that once we've assessed the situation, if it's not safe to do so, for you, pedestrian, other road users, then don't. So we've talked about pedestrians in different situations, quiet roads, busy roads, single carriageway, dual carriageway. So let's talk about the second uh, vulnerable group, which is cyclists. Cyclists, um, you know, they're open, they've got, not got much protection, haven't got a lovely big metal shell around them with, um, you know, crumple zones and all things in airbags. If they get hit, they're going to hurt themselves. Hopefully they're wearing a helmet. But even then, you know, it's the likelihood is an injury is going to occur if they come off their bike. So we need to make sure as road users, one, that we are giving priority to those above ourselves but also there's some rule changes that allow cyclists to position themselves in the roads um, when obviously when cycling to make it more safe for them to carry out maneuvers and ride with traffic so um, the main the main ones are that they are now allowed to ride in the middle of their lane so um, smack bang in the middle of a lane they are now also allowed to ride to abreast um, so what's the benefit of them being allowed to ride in the middle well edge of the road potholes drains people stepping off the curb so it's much safer to allow a cyclist to use the safest part of the road um, and why ride to abreast it makes them more visible it allows um, you know it allows them to safely use the road all of the road again um, and when you're on your own and cycling it's quite a vulnerable feeling so having someone next to you it kind of you feel a bit safer um, so you know there's there's good reasons why these rule changes have happened um, so what can we do as car drivers to make sure that we are dealing with cyclists in the correct way? Well, firstly, I always say to my pupils, we should treat a cyclist exactly like you would a car. You give them space, you watch what they're doing, be mindful that they could change position at any time, be mindful they could stop quickly at any time. And if you have, that mindset that that cyclist is another vehicle which it is but a, a, a larger vehicle you will treat it um like you would a car you'll as i say you, you you give it more space now one thing that has changed is um the highway code states that we should give 1.5 meters clearance when overtaking a cyclist so i would always advise at least at least two to three car lengths you should be giving uh, when traveling behind a cyclist and when overtaking you do 1.5 meters clearance so again it's assessing the situation we should give 1.5 meter clearance if that cyclist has to avoid something in the road there's room for them to go around it obviously we don't want to get too close clip them with our wing mirrors or our car itself that would absolutely not be good um, and it just creates that safety bubble for you and that cyclist to make sure that everybody's safe on the road. When it comes to the other rule for cyclists, they're talking about 
uh, when cyclists at junctions are turn making a turn. Um, uh, so let's talk about a very specific situation, a roundabout. A cyclist um, is approaching this roundabout and they are wanting to turn right. So um, they may or may not do a right signal. They should. They would use their arm to signal that they're going right. It's important to be mindful now that cyclists potentially would not use the same position as a car would use to make a turn. So if we were approaching a roundabout in a car and we were turning right, we would approach in the right lane if there was one. We would stick to the inside lane of the roundabout, hugging the roundabout as we go around, we'd be checking our mirrors and then coming across to back to the left for our junction when we get there. Now a cyclist can now approach a, a roundabout when turning right in the left hand lane. They can indicate a right turn, they should do, but they might not. And they can actually travel around the outside of the roundabout to turn right. So again, we've got to be very aware that when we approach a roundabout, if there is a cyclist on the roundabout or a cyclist ahead of us, don't assume just because they're in the left lane they're going to turn left or go straight on. It could well be that that cyclist wants to turn right third exit, we want to go straight on second, we're both in the left hand lane, don't assume the cyclist is going the same way as you. That cyclist can go all the way around the roundabout and then take that third right exit. But we want that second straight on, so what do we do? Absolutely, you give cyclists you give the cyclist the room to carry out their manoeuvre. You don't get too close to them from behind. And do you know what? They have the priority in the hierarchy, so you wait. You know, at a good safe distance, you allow them to carry out their manoeuvre going across the exit you want, and then you take the exit. Now, at all times, we need to be aware of what other people are doing whether there's a cyclist there or not, but especially when there's a cyclist, you know, it's, we've all seen it, people come racing up on our right hand side, they're keen to get around the roundabout. Um, in that situation, you know, your position of your car and your speed might actually indicate to others around you that you're waiting for something, so they might make them approach with caution. So you're not just benefiting the cyclist and yourselves, you might as well be benefiting other road users, helping them be aware of what's going on. So really important to understand that cyclists do not or may not follow the same road positioning rules that we do as cars. So again, in that situation, you assess, you're using your mirrors, you're aware of what's around you. You know, if you can, you should always give that one point or five metre clearance if you overtake and Treat them as if they were another vehicle. Give them the space and room they'd respect, you know. They're vulnerable because they've got nothing to protect them. So we should, as road users, as car drivers, do everything we can to make sure that we're doing stuff to make keep them safe. We're not putting them at risk. Ultimately, they are still responsible for their own safety, so they should be checking over their shoulders and, and things like that. But we, we can't assume that all cyclists are going to do that. So we have to do everything we can to make sure that they f they are safe and we are not causing any problems. So it's quite a lot to think about, um, you know, and I've been saying to my pupils, not, you know, it, it, it's important to understand these changes and it's important to realise that we should always be um, demonstrating that those vulnerable people are our priority. Um, but ultimately, we should always, when driving, have been aware of the most vulnerable, pedestrians and cyclists. We should always be checking our mirrors to see what's going on around us. We should always be mindful of what other road users are doing and whether they're going to do the right thing or not. Um, so in that respect, for me, your awareness and observations hasn't changed. It's just how do you demonstrate that you understand that that pedestrian now has priority or the cyclist now has priority or the horse rider, whatever it might be, or the motorcyclist. And then this is where it gets interesting in test. So when you're doing your practical UK driving test, um, firstly, um, not much has changed, as I said. Um, if 
as I said, there was a pedestrian and it was safe for you to give way to them, you should. If, after assessing the situation, you it would be unsafe for you to give way to them, that is absolutely fine. The examiner would have also seen that situation, assessed it, and would also hopefully have come to the same conclusion that um, it would have been unsafe for you to stop. So you wouldn't get marked down for it. If you approach and there is a pedestrian and it would have been safe for you to stop, but you choose not to, maybe you just saw them too late or you weren't 100% sure, so you kind of went and then you think, oh, probably I shouldn't have, I should have given way. The most you're going to be marked is a minor driving fault. Um, they haven't gone from one extreme of not marking it to everybody gets a serious. Um, the most you'll get is a minor driving fault. Now, they want to see drivers taking more responsibility at junctions when there are vulnerable users there. So everything I've talked about applies. And by doing that, you will demonstrate to the examiner that you understand that there are vulnerable road, road users that you've got to make a priority and assess to do the safest thing for everybody. So let's take a, a, a pretty extreme situation where you might not stop. If, some, if you chose not to stop when someone was already on the road crossing um, and the examiner had to use the brake, then absolutely that would be a serious fault all day long. You know, but that's no different to what it was before the rules changed. If someone stepped out in front of you and you should be doing an emergency stop to avoid colli colliding with them, you should be doing an emergency stop to avoid colliding with them. You know, that's no different. That hasn't been affected by these rules. Um, oh, imagine um, there's a pedestrian and you think, oh, he has okay for me to stop. And you see them very last minute, but you choose to slam your brakes on and stop quite abruptly. And there's a load of traffic behind you. Well, if that would have caused a collision, you will get marked as a serious fault. And again, that's not really anything to do with the rule changes. You know, it's... That, that would have happened anyway. If you had chosen to stop abruptly on a test before the new highway code rules and it was dangerous for you to do so, you would get marked as dangerous. If you do it even with these new highway code rules, it's still dangerous. So what they're looking to see is that you are showing you understand that the hierarchy is there and that you will do everything you can to protect the most vulnerable road users when it is safe for you to do so. If you choose not to stop when it could have been safe, the most you will get is a minor driving fault. So all in all, not a huge amount, you know, how we drive has drastically changed. We need to be aware very much of the new positioning for cyclists. We absolutely need to be aware um, that pedestrians may interpret the rule differently and just choose to step out. Um, we need to make sure that we are demonstrating that understanding and keeping us and those other road users safe. We need to be demonstrating that we're doing everything we possibly can to protect the most vulnerable road, road users. So I hope you liked the video. Um, if you did, as we said, please click and subscribe. And uh, you know, there's over 150 more videos on our channel. So take a look and uh, share them if you want to. Um, we appreciate all the support that we get. Um, you could even consider becoming a member of our channel if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, we really appreciate you watching and hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye.